Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're just gonna do a quick video um, showing how much XMP sucks. Um, or how much XMP can suck, because th this is the thing, um, like, we already know that memory manufacturers don't specify how many memory ranks their kits have, they don't specify what memory chips they use, um, and they also don't specify sub-timings, um, by which I mean basically, so, you know, it's, you, you get your cast latency, TRCD, TRP, Th these are all, you know, right in the spec of the memory kit. That's pretty normal, at least most of the time. Um, and then you get your timings like TWR, TRFC, TRRD, TRDS, TWR, you know, all of these other sub-timings, which, uh, to be fair, the tertiaries like these right here are um, CPU-specific. Um, but the secondary timings, these, uh, some of these are set by the actual memory kit itself. And they are not necessarily specified uh, when you're looking to, to purchase a memory kit. And that leads to some fun things. Like, for example, this kit right here, which is a DDR4-5000 Hynix DJR-based memory kit, uh, which literally performs worse with the XMP turned on than with it off because of what it does to the sub-timings. At least if you use benchmarks that actually put a lot of load on the memory instead of, you know, IDA or Geekbench or something like that. And I have another video covering how, like, IDA and Geekbench don't actually detect some pretty major timing issues. Um, and anyway, so we're gonna run times by CPU test here, which, uh, uh, is one of the more, uh, memory-sensitive CPU benchmarks out there. Uh, a really great, uh, another really great benchmark would be like SuperPi 32 million. However, that benchmark takes forever to run. It takes like five minutes. Uh, so we're not using that today. So we're, we're just going to use the TimeSpy CPU test because it's nice and quick. Um, and it's pretty sensitive to, to memory timings compared to, well, IDA, Geekbench, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, so uh, we get around 12,000 points and this is JDEC. So we're just at 2666, 1919, 1943. Uh, all of the, everything's on auto. Like, this this is the performance you get from this kit if you do not turn the XMP on and just kind of use it as is. Um, anyway, now we're going to restart. Also, the CPU has a manual 5.1 gigahertz overclock on it so that, like, there's no weirdness going on with the power management and turbo or and whatever. Um, so, uh, yeah. Also, if you're wondering, that 5.1 gigahertz overclock is not stable for general use. It's literally just for time spy because... Um, yeah, anyway, now we're going to turn on the XMP, and we're going to go with the number two profile, which is 4800, um, because the 5000 ratio doesn't really work properly on 11th gen CPU, so we can't use the DDR4-5000 uh, XMP. Well, we can, but then I'd have to manually set it to 5066, and, you know, th then it's, like, not really using the... Uh, it's not, like... It does still use the XMP sub-timings, but um, I, I don't feel like having to explain that, so... So we're just going to use the uh, 4800 uh, profile. That's going to take a little while to, to train. Um, okay, should be booting very soon. And just like that, I've deleted probably like 600 points from the, the Time Spy CPU test, which, uh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> So, capture card being extremely cooperative, as usual. There we go. So yeah, now we're, now we're just going to run Time Spy. And we should get about 11,500 points instead of a little over 12,000 points because the sub-timings on this memory kit on XMP are trash. Now, Funnily enough, you won't run into this with all motherboards because at least MSI and Asus, in my experience, just straight up ignore the sub-timings. So they basically run your memory kit out of spec when you enable the XMP. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, um, Gigabyte and ASRock motherboards don't. And so if you buy a lot of, you know, well... The, the thing is, it's not even specific to high-speed kits. Like, I've seen even, like, 3600 rated kits with massive sub-timing issues. Um, it's just kind of like, yeah, this is just, like, this is a thing. I, I don't know why it's a thing. Like, yeah, see? <laughs> we just lost, like, 500 points. Um, and the whole reason this happens 
is if we open up Azrock Timing Configurator, like, yeah, we're, we're at 4800, you know, DDR4 4800, of course we're in gear 2, but that's not the real problem here. The real problem is our sub-timings, which have, and it's not even like the TRCD TRP, because you, you have to think about all of your timings are measured in clock cycles. So everything is relative to the speed of the memory. So, you know, cast latency 19 at 2666 is a very different latency from cast latency 19 at 4800. Um, now the thing is, going from uh, 2666 to 4800 is a 80% increase in speed, right? We have 80% more clock cycles available to do stuff. Um, and now, you know, say our read-to-read -read delay long, so um, that timing right there, that's now 15. Previously it was 7. Um, so that's twice as long, basically. <laughs> so that's twice as long. So we have 80% more clock cycles, but it takes us two times as many clock cycles to get anything done. So this has actually just gotten slightly slower. Because if we didn't want it to get slower, it would have had to go from 7 to 13. Uh, Ish. And it's at 15, but that's not really that bad. There, there's like TRDS, which is at 19. Um, previously, that was at 4. So that... <laughs> that right there is taking... Yeah, five times as many clock cycles to get the same amount of work done. That's, that's great. Um, you know, WTR hasn't really changed. TRFC has actually gone up linearly, so that's not terrible. TFA is at 65, but the th the funny thing about TFA being at 65 is it's actually shorter than your short delay here. Um, so this doesn't work because this is four active wi uh, this is four active windows. Um, I mean, four active window. And this timing basically sets the maximum, uh, the minimum amount of delay between four consecutive uh, activate, com not real. Ba so, I'm screwing up the explanation for that one. Basically, um, if this is lower than four times your TRRDs, it doesn't do anything. And here it pretty much is, because TRRDS is 19, and TRRDL is 15. So for TRRDL, it actually adds five five clock cycles of extra delay. And for TRRDS, it actually doesn't do anything because TRRDS is at 19. I didn't even know the register would go to 19. I thought the register tops out at 15, but apparently it tops out at 19. So that's, that's great. Um, and then also the tertiary timing sort of went to hell, but that's, you know, that's not really the memory kit's fault. Um, and now if we, we open up Typhoon Burner and we check the uh, SPD of this memory kit... Um, you know, we, we read, um, 51, and we check the SPD, and we see that actually TRDS and TRDL are supposed to be 19, uh, at 2,500 megahertz, and at 2,400, which is what we're currently running, they're supposed to be 18 and 18. So, yeah, that's great, with a TFAW of 65. So that, that right there, like, even, so technically this isn't even matching up with the timings for some reason properly, but even if it did, it wouldn't make a difference, because this is still trash. <laughs> Also, I don't know why their TFAW is set below the TRRDs. I guess I guess this is for platforms where the TRRDs don't go below above 15. Because I think like Ryzen, you can't set them above 15. So if you use this memory kit on Ryzen, it would actually sort of use like the TFAW would actually do something. Here it it really doesn't. It's kind of like so th this is great. This and of course this lovely uh you know sub sub timing mess that we have here. And it really is just like TRC, fall, and the, the RRDs here. Um, yeah, that right there uh, just completely trashes the, the times by CPU performance. Because, um, uh, yeah, that, that, like, hooray XMP. <laughs> hooray for XMP. And that's actually a very, like, I've seen, like, DDR4 3600 kits that have TRD15 in their XMP profile. Um so yeah, this is this is a very real sort of problem you can run into with some memory kits where you turn the XMP on and your performance in like more memory intensive benchmarks goes down. And I say more memory intensive benchmarks because like the IDA memory test is not actually very mem like memory intensive. Um, it doesn't do a lot of memory access. Um, and so it doesn't really pick up on these kinds of issues. Like if we ran IDA, except I don't have it installed, it would actually tell you that this is, should be performing fine, but it won't because it's IDA and that memory benchmark kind of freaking sucks. 
So yeah, this this right here is just just great. Um, XMP is truly uh, incredible. Uh, yeah. And like, and unfortunately, I don't really have like a good like, hey, this is how you avoid this because it's basically a case of like it's like some manufacturers don't do this and some do. Um, I've had generally good experiences with like Crucial kits, G Skill kits, Corsair kits actually as well. Um, and then this right here, this is an A Data kit. Um, I've also run into this on a, some team group sticks, but I asked them to fix it and they, they did. So I don't know if that's still potentially an issue with some of those. The Patriot kits have been fine, I think, though I don't, I barely ever use those at stock. So, you know, th th like that's kind of the funny thing is like this, this isn't really something I think about when it comes to XMP because I don't use XMP very much, but Earlier today, I was just want wanted to do a quick check that, you know, Time Spy uh, would behave the way I expect it to on a 11900K. And so I just grabbed a random memory kit off of my desk, which happened to be this. I ran it on, you know, JDEX settings. It was fine. Then I enabled the XMP and the performance cratered. And I was like, right. <laughs> yes, this is a thing. Um, and then I spent some time trying to figure out why it is the performance went to hell. And of course, it was just like the XMP sub timings are terrible. So, yeah, that's that's great. Um, so that's just something to, to keep in mind with uh, with memory. Well, with like if you're manually overclocking your memory, this isn't an issue because you don't have to rely on the manufacturer's terrible sub timings. But, you know, if, if you're going to be using a kit at stock, this is actually a potential very real issue. And unfortunately, I'm not aware of any way to, to get the SPD, like the full SPD. Because if we open up CPU-Z, right, um, if you open up CPU-Z and you get the SPD profile over here, um, it doesn't show the TRRD timings. It doesn't show uh, TFAW. And those are very important timings for, uh, like, memory, like, sustained memory bandwidth. Um, yeah, there you go. So A Data, SK Hynix, single rank, DJR, and you know, turn the XMP on performance goes down. Um, lovely. Um, if we go, yeah, because like the CPU Z doesn't check this part of the uh, SPD chip. Um, so like this is just programmed into the memory kit at the factory, and at like. And well, the reason why they do this is it improves compatibility because by running trash timings, yes, you reduce the performance of the memory kit, but you also make it more stable because, you know, like, th like that's the whole reason this is done is just like it improves the stability of the memory kit, but it's like it also trashes the performance. So like, why would you want that? I have no idea. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's that's it for this video. That's all I wanted to show you is just like, Sometimes uh, turning on XMP can actually make your performance worse. Now, it shouldn't really happen on Asus and MSI motherboards because they generally just ignore that portion of the SPD profile. Um, or more like that portion of the XMP profile, I should say. Um, but Gigabyte and ASRock boards will read the entire XMP and they will use the entire XMP. And a lot of manufacturers put terrible XMPs on their memory kits, and I have no idea why. Like, they'd be better off leaving it at, like, JDEC. Because that's not even JDEC. That's, like, I, like 1919 doesn't make any sense. If we scaled it off a of JDEC, which at 2666, right, for, for, actually, I guess we're going to continue the video a little bit longer. So, for TRRDL, right, the stock timing was, like, the JDEC timing is 7. Actually, I should probably pull up Typhoon Burner to, to point that out. Um, I don't know why I keep closing it. it. Doesn't really make a lot of sense to do that. Anyway, so yeah, like here you can see, so th these are the JDEC uh, timings right here, right? And you can see like we have JDEC 2666, 1200, 2133, uh, 1866, uh, 1600. Yes, there's a spec for DDR4 1600. Um, and you can see that TRDS is supposed to do four and TRDL is supposed to do seven at 2666. So if we scaled that up with those JDEC timings to 4800, right? You take your 4800 and divide it by 2666, and then you multiply uh, TRD by that. So TRDS, you multiply by 4, it should be 7. So at 4800, um, assuming linear scaling, which, you know, again, like kind of a generous assumption, this right here should be 7. If it's more than 7, you start losing performance. 
Um, and, uh, like, you start, yeah, you basically start losing performance on that operation relative to JDEC. And then if we go for TRDL, that should be at, like, 12 or 13. Like, so this one should be at 12 or 13. This should be at, like, 7 or 8. Um, and we don't actually have, well, we have a WTRS spec. So WTRS should be uh, 4, according to JDEC. Um, and so here we have an 11. Um, so, you know, if we scaled that as well, that should actually be just 7 or 8 again um, for that timing there. And then WTRL 17, I'm not sure what to do with that one. The issue is with Intel memory controllers, these two aren't actually really a thing. They're actually based off of these two timings right here, and those are set by the motherboard. So, um, but the, these also, like, this isn't actually that bad. Like, 4135, like, that, that's pretty loose, but it's not, it's not, not, like, it's not in the same neighborhood of looseness as TRDS 19. Like, I legit didn't know the register would go that high. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway... The TRFC, on the other hand, is actually sensible, because if you look at the stock TRFC timing, which we don't even have listed, I don't think. Um, yeah, okay, we don't have the stock TRFC, because normally the stock TRFC is just specified in nanoseconds, but we can work backwards. So we're going to do 2666 divided by 4800. We're going to multiply that by our current TRFC, which is uh, 842, and that gives us a... Uh, TRFC of 467, which if you re rewind the video to the beginning when I first showed the JDEC timings, you would notice that that's actually 467. So, like, TRFC, like, this is just scaled up linearly, you know, from the JDEC specification, which makes sense, because, like, yeah, and as for why all the other subtimings, like, why a bunch of the other subtimings get completely screwed for no apparent reason, I have no idea. Um... I guess we could also take a look at the, the four active window timing, which is now at 65, um, which if we went from JDEC, you know, that would be 28. So give me a second. Just going to run the math on that one. And you might be like, why aren't you using the Windows calculator? This OS has a broken calculator on it for some reason. So can't use that, unfortunately. But... Yeah, so if if this scaled up from the like JDEC timings, the four four active window should be fifty, um, not sixty five. But of course, it's set to sixty seven, sixty four, and then the motherboards for some reason made it sixty five. Not entirely sure how that happened, but um, yeah, so that's that's great. Um, hooray XMP! <laughs> what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing it is. So. Anyway, um, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is somewhat useful. And uh, yeah, um, like I guess check your sub timings when you turn on XMP or you might find out that your performance jumps off a cliff for no apparent reason. Um, and this isn't even the worst example I've seen of this. Like the worst example would be like a low clock kit with really loose sub timings. This isn't too bad because this is like a really, really high clock kit. So it can kind of compensate for the incredible looseness, but yeah, uh, still not great. So anyway, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual uh, YouTuber merch. Both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel. So it would be much appreciated if you'd check them out. And that's it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.